The Serial Wombat is capable of sending and receiving UART signals at standard baud rates based on commands that come in over I2C. In this example, we'll show how to send commands via I2C to your Serial Wombat from an Arduino. These commands will instruct send and receive over UART to a USB to UART adapter, which is attached to a PC. The circuit is quite simple. We're driving the serial wombat with five volts provided by the Arduino. We're attached to the SDA and SCL lines with pull-ups on I squared C, and we're receiving data into the, into the input only pin on the serial wombat from the PC. We're sending data to the PC from one of the input output capable commands. Note that I have a voltage divider in place here. The, the serial wombat is being driven by five volts, which means that the output on this pin is five volts. However, this USB to UART adapter expects 3.3 volt or lower IO. So this provides approximately a two and a half volt uh, signal going into the USB to UART adapter. Included with the Serial Wombat library is the Serial Wombat UART example. It assumes that you've already loaded the library. If you don't know how to do that, then there's a separate video in this channel that shows you how. We can include Serial Wombat.h that lets us use the Serial Wombat. We declare a Serial Wombat, SW. We declare a Serial Wombat UART that, you, that is placed on that Serial Wombat. We initialize our I squared C with a wire begin. I would recommend if you're using the UART to increase your wire speed up to 400 kilobits per second. This increases the total amount of throughput that you can put out to the serial. Note that your serial port is going to have less performance than a standard hardware serial port because each of the data needs to be transmitted once over I squared C, then sent out over the UART. We begin the serial wombat along with the I squared C address of that wombat. Different wombats have different I squared C addresses. Uh, 6C, 6D, 6E, and 6F are pre-shipped examples. We're going to use the software UART begin with a standard baud rate of 115200. Note that only standard baud rates of uh, 300, 1200, 2400, 4800, 9600, 192384, 57.6 and 115.2 are supported in this version of the Wombat. The first pin is the pin that will run the UART state machine. This could be either the receive or the transmit pin. In this case, I picked the transmit pin. The second parameter is the pin that will be used for receive. I chose Wombat pin zero since it's an input only pin. Might as well use that one for receive. If you don't want to have receive, put 255 in this value. The fourth parameter is the pin that will be used for transmit. This is uh, one of our input output pins. If you don't want to have transmit, if you only want to receive and you want to use this pin for something else, then put 255 in this value. Note that the state machine pin must match one of the pin values here. Beyond that, the Serial Wombat UART behaves in a similar fashion to the standard Arduino serial uh, object. It inherits from the stream class, which means that it has all of the same interfaces, print line, print, write, read, read bytes. Uh, and so we'll go into the simple loop here. And each time in the loop, we'll read from the serial wombat to see if there's a byte available. If there is, if it's an A, we'll print back to the UART, A is for aardvark. If it's a B, we'll print B is for butterfly. If it's a C, we'll type C is for cat. If it's an X, then we'll dump out all of the printable ASCII characters from uh, 21, which is just after space, up to 7F, which is, uh, I believe, a tilde. Let's watch this Arduino sketch work. We'll do an upload and take a look at our terminal. Upload is complete, and it dumped out setup complete as we expected. If I send an A, we get A is for aardvark. If I send a B, we get B is for butterfly. If I send a C, we get C is for cat. If I send an uppercase X, we get all of the data that comes out. If I send multiple X's, 
we get lots of data. So we can see we can get a decent amount of performance here. Uh, generally speaking, the R do we, the generally speaking, the serial wombat works better if you give write large arrays rather than small arrays, or if you read multiple bytes at a time. This single read command is particularly inefficient because it queries the wombat each time to say, is there a byte available? Is there a byte available? Is there a byte available? This is okay if you're doing something that you're running once every few milliseconds. You would not want to read in a uh, hundred bytes by putting this in a loop of a hundred. If I wanted to read a hundred characters, instead I would do the read bytes array 100. This will tend to be much more efficient. Writes are significantly more efficient because they don't have to read back any data. Let's take another let's take a look at another Arduino example now, which is a loopback test. We have our input set up here, our output set up here. We're simply going to feed data that we transmit right back into the receive, and then we'll verify that what we sent out was what we intended. The loopback test is very similar. Uh, we declare a wombat, we declare wombat uart. In this case, we're also going to use the Arduino serial begin. Uh, the serial will be used to output the results of our test. Essentially, we'll be using the Arduino terminal. So we can open the serial monitor and we will make use of that here very shortly. The We start up our I squared C, set it to 400,000, give us a quick output that lets us know we started the serial wombat. We started the serial wombat UART. Our initialization is complete. Then we're just going to go into a loop. We're using what's called the linear feedback shift register to generate our random numbers. Whenever I do unit tests, uh, I use my own random number generator. That way it's portable across platforms. I get the same test across lots of different platforms. I don't need real random numbers and I want to be able to see them so that they start the same way so that the test is repeatable that my own random number generator, I can also use two separate seeds, which means that I can generate random numbers going out, then check them when they come back uh, in. This is useful on small systems where you want to be able to send a lot of data, but you may not be able to buffer it. We're going to set our buffer size equal to 128. It's important to know that the serial wombat can buffer up to 64 bytes for transmit and 128 bytes coming in. If you get 200 bytes that come into the serial wombat and you haven't pulled any of those bytes out back to the Arduino, then some of those are going to get lost. We declare a, a transmit and receive buffer. Then we go in here. We flush our serial wombat buffer of any extra bytes and we give a notification if we got any. That's just in case one of the tests failed or it's possible on our very first write that during some transitions we might get an extra byte in the buffer. Uh, I believe that I've resolved all of those problems. So we're going to pick, we're going to transmit some number of bytes that's between zero and just less than our buffer size. We're going to generate random numbers to go into the transmit and then we'll write those out. By the time these get out, there will be bytes in the buffer to read back in. So we're going to use the second random number generator that will generate the same numbers up here to see how many bytes we're supposed to read back in and read those bytes in and a little bit of debug code there. We can take that out. Uh, check to see if there's a mismatch. If there's a mismatch, we'll write out what iteration we were on what the value that we expected was, what the value that we got, uh, I'm sorry, what, what byte of the iteration. If there's a mismatch, we'll write out the iteration, what byte of that iteration, what the expected value was, and what the value we actually received was. If there's not a mismatch, we'll simply write out the number of passes and the number of fails, and we'll go through the iteration and run this loop again. Let's upload the sketch now, and we'll see what happens. All of our tests are passing. So what's actually going on? Let's take a look. We have a logic analyzer here. The top two channels are the I squared C traffic. Four and five, which since we're in a loopback mode are matching, are the serial. 
if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that even though we're moving relatively large amounts of data, the effort it takes to write data out, then read it back in, means that the amount of actual serial traffic that we can push through is relatively small. We can see, okay, we're coming in here and we're queuing up a variety, and I don't expect you to know the Serial Wombat protocol, but we are queuing up a variety of bytes that are going in over I squared C, and then those same bytes start coming back out over the, uh, over the UART. So you don't have to look at this in depth, but the important thing to know essentially is that reading out bytes and writing them back in, because we are limited to a single, uh, half duplex I squared C channel effectively that you cannot reach 115,000 bits per second in both directions because there's overhead with the Wombat protocol and there is overhead with, uh, and because it's the I squared C essentially only works in a single direction at one time. Now that said, it can still be quite a useful thing to, uh, to have to add an extra debug channel or for low speed communications. So if you, uh, you know, if you need something that's more than that, you probably need to pick an Arduino that has additional hardware UART channels. If you have any questions about either of the two examples that we looked at today, please leave them in the comments below. If you successfully used the Serial Wombat UART for a project, I'd love to hear what you used it for. Uh, leave me a comment if you have suggestions for improvements in the future versions of the software, one of which will I have in mind is to add some, uh, some, some caching on the, uh, on the PC side, I'm sorry, on the Arduino side, uh, so that we can we can be more efficient in the way that we transmit and receive in duplex. Uh, that's, that's something I'm looking at. If you have other suggestions or if you find incompatibilities or problems, please let me know. Uh, if you have questions about these examples, please let me know. Or if you're successfully using the Serial Wombat UART in a project, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you're using it for. If you have suggestions for improvement to the library or the firmware, please let me know. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about the Serial Wombat will not be returned.